TV. How y'all doing out there? And let's just get into it. Let's go, let's go ahead and get into it. Sitting next to us is the Million Dollar Man himself. He is behind one of the most best independent labels in the industry, all right? And he's also the author of the book entitled The Music Game, all right? So please, everybody, welcome Mr. Leroy McMath. How you doing this evening? Doing fine, thank you. Thank How you. are you guys? Oh, we are doing great. Being. And thank you for allowing us in your beautiful home. You're welcome. And world. you left our whole, man, Power Entertainment, WBA, um, Man, why don't you just kick it off and let's hear some of that resume. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the beginning, it all started with Power. Right. Uh, that was my um, record label, in which we, we launched a project, uh, MC Breed, uh, and his hit, Ain't No Feature in Your Friend. Classic. Which, yeah, a lot of people kind of knew Power from that project, and, and from that it went on with the DFC, and artists like Ghetto Mafia and you know more recently you know as the years went on Freak Nasty with the record The Dip, mm -hmm. um, Sherelle, uh, 12 Gauge, Donkey Butt so we, we just have a you know just a list of artists. Oh you slipped that one in on me you did the Donkey Butt too? So we, we after um, 12 Gauge did the hit Donkey Butt right. and we signed him for his next project. Oh, okay mm -hmm. okay. So we, we we picked him up after his uh, his mega hit, so we did the next two albums on him as well. Okay. Now, what Robbie also mentioned as well, you also the man behind the program, the WBA, which stands for the World Basketball Association. Right. Now, um, my first question to you is, what was your first love? Was it sports or was it music? Well, it was actually sports. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, a young person in middle school elementary, high school. I played baseball, I played basketball. And baseball was my first love, but I was, basketball was my love. That's what was more your thing. Yeah, it was, it was more. I mean, with basketball, we, we always had packed houses in our games, so, you know, you go out and score 20, 30 points, it was good, you know, you have some talk about it in school the next day. I played baseball in some of our games, we play in April, you know, it was, I was in Michigan at the time, and you know, it was snow on the ground. We may have only people at the game was the umpires and the team we was playing. <laughs> so, you know, we have, had a great team, but no one ever knew it because it's like, man, it's too cold out there. We went to basketball season, we wear coats. <laughs> hey, I heard you was the man of basketball, and let's talk about a Michigan game, what, 69 points or something like that? Yeah, I'll do it with something. <laughs> so it's all entertaining. I mean, if you really yeah. look at it at the end of the day, we've got music, we've got basketball. I mean, yeah. the, the whole spectrum is, is entertainment. So what compelled you to s decide entertainment? That's McMahon. That's you know, like, kind of like what you said. It's all entertainment. Right. Even one of the things I noticed in, in, in high school, you know, you go to a basketball game afterwards, you go to the dance or you go to concerts. It's all entertainment. And when I was playing... I was still toying with the idea of having a record label, having a film company, promoting concerts and things of that nature. Because I started promoting concerts when I was like 18, 19 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when I was in college, my freshman year, you know, we promote dances and throwing little concerts and playing basketball, going to Burger King, doing all types of things, you know, just it's trying popular to popular right <laughs> there, boy. <laughs> so, but it all, you know, I was always kind of involved with entertainment yes, sir. and kind of jumping from that a little bit to the reason that I uh, got involved with the WBA, which is the World Basketball Association, professional developmental league that kind of helped young athletes, guys uh, fresh out of college that may not be drafted first round, uh, may not get drafted at all. Most of, the, most of the players that we have in our league, you would never hear of them. Mm -hmm. But still, when they play in our league, that's like a second win. It gives them a chance to be exposed to the NBA scouts or some of the media, other players. That, uh, for instance, we had guys in our league from Division II schools out of the CIAA. Okay. And they was competing against guys out of the SEC, the ACC. And you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know who was from where. And that's a competition right okay. there. Yeah. You wouldn't know because the comp they always say, well, Division I, two. 
Division I schools and NIAA school competition level is down here at NC, SEC and all these other things, that's not true. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you ever attend a WBA game, I guarantee you, you could watch a game and you couldn't pick out who's from the ACC, SEC, or the CIAA, or the SIAC. Because, the, I mean, the, it's just the way it's promoted. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to the larger schools and conferences, they have bigger budgets. You know, they have TV budgets. And, and when you go up to the smaller schools, they have smaller budgets, which they don't do as much advertising. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of people like in Atlanta, for instance, it's probably never ever been to a Clark or Morehouse game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? you're right, you're right. But a lot of them go to Georgia Tech in Georgia because, you know, they may send a busload of kids up there, and, you know, one of the businesses may sponsor them, et cetera. But with the WBA, we was trying to come up with a way to create a, a pipeline or a just create a, help them expand their dream. Right. You know, because you get a lot of, a lot of athletes. You have to remember, it still goes back. Only one out of every million is going to make it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's reality. That's reality. But at least give give them a chance. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We give them a chance. We okay. said something real important too. A key word: developmental. Mm -hmm. um, so, with saying that, did you focus not just on the court but off the court? Did you want to expound on that a little bit? We sure did. We focus on teaching them, trying to help them understand life after basketball, or life after the WBA or NBA. Mm -hmm. you know, we try to uh, show them that they can do other things. They can be team owners, they can be coaches, marketing executives, they can be um, promotion people. I mean, so many other things you can do to be in the entertainment or sports field. You don't just have to go out and play, because everybody cannot play. Yeah. And what people don't realize, you know, if I had to do it again, I might consider coaching. I mean, you have coaches oh, yeah. now making ten million a year. Yeah. You know, I mean, some coaches are making more than the player. Yeah. yeah. Simply because they're the brains of that operation. So we try and teach uh, the athletes that there's other things that you can focus on because, you know, the reality is, you know, we have ten teams, hundred players. You may have. 20, they get invited to the NBA Summer League. After our league, mm -hmm. you may get one, if that, to make a team. The rest of them have to go to Europe, Mexico, all over the world. And you bounce around making little money, you hang in there, some stick and some don't. But when you get frustrated and want to do something else, you have to have a backup plan. So we try, you know, try to get that in their head because, you know, I mean, like anything else, any yeah. other business, you know, trying to make it in, in entertainment or professional sport, it's a gamble. Yeah, you got to have that plan yeah. B.